What's up, everyone? Thanks for joining Generation Tech. It's episode 12. Uh, again, rolling right along. And uh, I want to introduce my compadre, my partner in crime, JB Matt, 1697. What's up, man? Nothing much. Uh, been a pretty slow week on the tech stuff, but uh, got some exciting news today. We got a couple Apple announcements. A lot of fun little things that's going on. How about you, Rich? Yeah, you know, it's been a typical week for me. Uh, actually, a little slow at work, and uh, I'm thankful because the last couple of weeks have been pretty hectic. And, uh, you know, just, just catching up on stuff. But, again, I'm looking forward to the weekend. It's like the weekend just flies by. I don't know about I think everyone's the same way. I'm just complaining too much. But, um, <laughs> yeah, nothing, nothing yeah. else is going on with me. But, uh, yeah, like, I, like you mentioned, there was, wasn't a lot to talk about for tech this week. I mean, there were a couple of things that we're going to bring up. Yeah. But um, it wasn't like last week where we had the Unpacked event. You know, that was a whole show yeah. based on Unpacked. Then that's an easy week to, to do. Um, but yeah. But this week we got a couple couple topics. I mean, it won't, I don't think it'll be a full length, very lengthy show, but I think we have enough stuff this week that will interest you guys. And I think it's definitely worth staying tuned, I guess, today. Yeah. So. And I want to thank, I want to start off by thanking everyone that came out in the chat. Really appreciate all the support, all the likes, all the retweets, and everything. Really, I, I thank you guys. You know, to, you guys don't really have to watch us on a Thursday night, but you know, I guess you guys like our opinions and our viewpoints. So, and I really appreciate that. And I'm sure Matt, you feel the exact same way, right? Yeah, exactly. And and uh, along with the people who watch us after the fact, like if you miss the stream, you can't come out or whatever. No worries, we always have it uploaded. And we really appreciate your support and liking and commenting and all that stuff. Yep. So, yeah, very thankful for that. So let's jump right into the first topic, which is really, I, I've been <laughs> looking forward to this for the longest. and Yeah, because you're about to buy a new car, like, somewhat soon. Yeah, so well, maybe it's Apple CarPlay. And, you know, I, I, I'm an Apple person, as you guys all know, and I love the iOS and Apple, Mac, everything. It's just how everything's all integrated in my life. And when I step into my car... It's a different experience, okay? It's kind of like when cell phones were first smartphones. You know, you had the Blackberries, you had the um, the Windows smartphones um, before the iPhone came out. It was kind of like a big, crazy jungle. Just whatever went, went. <laughs> you know, cr ugly designs. Everything was all fragmented. And Apple came along, introduced the iPhone, and everything was... It, it changed the course of smartphones, honestly. And uh, I, I feel like Apple is trying to do the same exact thing with with uh, the car, your experience in the car. You know, each manufacturer has their own uh, in integration, their own uh, UI, and a lot of it is honestly pure crap. I mean, if you look, uh, I know Ford, they tried the, the Microsoft uh, Sync for a while. Yeah. And I didn't hear too many good things. I don't think things. they do that anymore. I, I, I think they just got away with it. Um, I, I think they went to some other... Some other uh, system. I don't remember what exactly, but uh, like I was mentioning, you know, it's really a mess. Like if you go to different cars, you you have a clunky experience. Even like the high end cars, like a Mercedes or an Audi or a BMW, they haven't perfected the UI where it's navigation or ca uh, car, you know, audio with uh, you're, you're picking up a cell phone or whatever or text message playback. Whatever it is, it's it's very clunky and it's all a mess. And I'm really, really excited to see what Apple is implementing here. You know, because it's all going to work with your iPhone. And knowing them, it's going to be polished. You know, so I'm really excited to what, what you know, I, I'm, I'm wondering when are they actually going to be pushing this out? You know, how soon can they get these out to cars, right? Yeah, for sure. Um, one thing I noticed kind of jumping into the like UI type thing um, it's almost uh, I noticed a lot of people were thinking that it's a joke it's like it looks like someone literally just photoshopped some of the icons onto a onto a, a screen in a Volvo or a Lamborghini but it's actually surprising people it's a very quiet release kind of quiet announcement um, which I think it doesn't sound like Apple to me because normally with Apple they like to be very extravagant, very grand in their announcements, their uh, reveals, all that type of stuff. So 
I don't know. It sound like it sounded kind of fake at the beginning, but now that uh, we're seeing proof of it, uh, I think that a lot of people are kind of sticking their noses at it. You know, like, oh, what is this? Well, it, I kind of think that Apple's taking this as a hobby approach. Remember how the Apple TV for the longest time has been a side hobby? Yeah, um, they didn't really. They didn't. They didn't really take it too seriously. They didn't take it seriously. They didn't put a lot of uh, marketing into it. You didn't really see Apple TV commercials, right, and stuff like that. So I feel yeah. like now that Apple TV is more than it, it's a product line, it's more than a hobby. That this will be their hobby. You know, they're gonna tinker with it. It's not perfect. You know, you can see from the UI itself, it's not very uh, polished or Apple-like. You know, with the big buttons. But then again, when you're in the car, big buttons are going to be much better because it's, you know, if it's a small little high res button, it's harder to press while you're driving. But I digress. I, I think that, you know, it's just, it's a little too bland as it is now. But this is their first iteration. You know, iOS yeah. 1 or what they called it back then. It was, uh, it wasn't called iOS. It was just, I think it was just OS. I, I, iPhone OS, you know, whatever it was. The first iteration, it was, yeah. it was bland, you know, but. Over time, they added to it, just like anything else. And, you know, I it actually reads back your text messages. It integrates your maps and navigation into your head unit. And from watching all the videos and all the hands-on experiences, it looks exactly what you would expect out of Apple. It just works. And um, go ahead. we have actually a, a, a good comment in our live uh, chat. Mike Yo actually says... If car ma manufacturer would integrate an iPad into the dashboard, he thinks that that would be incredible. Uh, do you think that that would be good? Like maybe an iPad Mini kind of type, because that's more of the size of a, a touchscreen nav system uh, right about now. It's probably about five to seven inches, kind of varies. Would you use that? I, I mean, would you use it in the same way that you think that you would use a nav system for just music? Or See, I have navigation? seen people uh, integrate aftermarket parts and stuff like that, an iPad into their car. Um, mm -hmm. As it is now, it's not optimized to use in a car, so it's kind of like, eh. But I, I see what he means, like if they optimize it for the car in this way, um, maybe. But um, for me, I, I want to have a very... Uh, I don't know what it is. Maybe if the iPad actually docked in the dashboard, maybe, and it was a seamless experience. But at the same yeah. time, I don't know. I, I would rather have it this way where it's an actual head unit that's made for the car and I didn't have to take it out. You know, I could just plug in my phone, which I'm always using. I'm always having up-to-date information on. And I know, you know, my contacts are all up-to-date. My uh, points of interest are all up-to-date, blah, 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 whatever it is. Yeah. Um, whereas if I have my iPad and it's only for my car, you know, it might not be up to date and it, there could be some issues there. But your phone's always with you. You always have it la the latest uh, information on there. So I think that's what they should really base it on. And, and I think that's a perfect, uh, that's a good point though, Mike. You know, I, you know, I think a lot of people might actually do that. Or I, th I think if, if Apple sold a kit maybe or something like that, maybe um, if it came with cars now like as a, a dock not like not like necessarily a dock because i mean they could always change the lightning cable and that would be kind of annoying for people if they just got a lightning cable dock or something um but maybe some sort of magnetic feature on a case i don't know they could all they there's tons of different ways that they can implement imp, implement <laughs> implement uh data like sharing i guess you could like yeah information sharing between two different things um so it's really up to them how they want to go at this how they think that people will will buy it um because a lot of people if you're buying an apple product you like the clean look you kind of like the seamless approach so exactly um, i think i think that if they do this they they definitely have to pull off something that everyone will like no matter what car you have i mean uh, it's cool all if you have a Mercedes and a Ferrari, but what if someone has a Ford Fiesta? <laughs> maybe they want, uh, maybe they want that iTunes or Apple integration into the uh, into the car. Well, so th they showed off uh, like Ferrari and Mercedes. They showed off the hands-on stuff, but I think that's because 
they are the first ones that are going to be putting this into their cars. But mm-hmm. they Honda, uh, Chevy, Ford, like low Hyundai even. Um, there were many, many variety of manufacturers that are going to be implementing this down the road. They, they signed, uh, I don't know if it was an agreement or whatever it was, but I did see an article where there were like 15 different car companies that are going to be doing this. And that's great. Uh, BMW, Ford, mm-hmm. GM, Hyundai, Honda, and Toyota. And actually, it's a couple more. So and s- quite a bit of the general car manufacturer and see greg's in the chat made up a, a really good point also that the i like if they if you uh wanted to use your ipad like you were mentioned um you would have to have an additional internet service 30 dollars mm-hmm. a month extra so and meanwhile on your phone you're always going to have a cell connection on it you know it's, it's yeah it just makes sense to base everything off of your phone you know mm-hmm. um but it's funny that you mentioned a tablet because have you looked at the interior of the tesla model s yeah, I, I saw that. That's the one with the handles that kind of pop out of the door. Yeah. Like when you go near it with the key and stuff. Yeah. Well, if you look at the actual uh, dashboard, it's all one big center console with a big touch screen. It's, it's basically like an overgrown iPad built into the screen. Mm-hmm. And that's what I kind of thought when you mentioned it, but it's not re- removable. It's always there. You yeah. know, you can't remove it as a, t- as a tablet, which is what I would want. Like if they did something like that, that would be perfect. Um, and it, like there are cars where I'm looking at like the, the, the Infinity Q50, a brand new car that was released this year. It has a similar dashboard to the uh, Tesla, where it has a big touchscreen. Actually, it has two different touchscreens, um, and it all updates based on what you're viewing. You know, and there's a couple of buttons mm-hmm. on the bottom, but it's it's pretty much all touchscreen. And I think that's the perfect way to have a t- uh, a dashboard these days. The same way Apple hated using the fixed keyboards, uh, not using, but th- how they made fun of the fixed keyboards on like the, the Blackberries and all the physical keyboards. Yeah. You know, you're stuck with that keyboard for the life of using the phone. Same way on in your car, you're stuck with those buttons, the uh, the all, all the AC unit uh, buttons and stuff like that, your radio. Uh, it's all fixed. And if you have a touch screen, it's all able to change real time based on what application you want to work with. You know, if you have an AC, if you want to change your AC, your temperature in the car, the whole yeah. screen can change based on, you know, that one thing. So I, I think that's the way everything will be going down the road. And it makes perfect sense. You know, it'd be kind of cool as if they, uh, with the touch screen kind of interface for the entire like car system with the heat, you know, the, that I think it'd be kind of cool to have like uh, dynamic scenes, maybe with either weather outside or something, or maybe if, say, you wanted it to be warm in the car, maybe they could have like a beach kind of background in the winter. <laughs> well, I don't know. I think that'd be kind of a cool feature. Th- those are all possibilities with with a uh, yeah. an actual screen that's on as a dashboard. You know, it's things that you just don't see now. Like my car, I have a screen on there, but it's like. It's for navigation. It's for the cha- you know the, the the radio and stuff like that. It's not a touch screen. Um, it has a, a traditional console with all the buttons, and you know it's gotten those that type of interior have gotten us by for mm-hmm. as long as cars have been around. Now that Apple's going into the into automotive uh, realm, I feel like there's going to be drastic changes in the interiors of these cars for the yeah. better. Um. And we have another comment uh, suggesting kind of like a product idea. Um, Hunter Baker in the chat actually says, just make a MacBook Pro that has a screen, a detachable screen, where it's either a Mac, iPad, or a car uh, nav system. So what do you think about that? I mean, that'd be kind of their ultimate device because they, a lot of people have been debating what it would be like if they combined a device with the OS and uh, iOS. So. Well, that's a completely different uh, question altogether. iOS, OS 10 into one device. That's a completely different thing. But it, like he was talking about where you have one device that goes into multiple, like you, you attach it to a base where it's a MacBook Pro or you put yeah. it into your car and it's a head unit or you're just walking around and it's a tablet. You know, that that's an interesting prospect, honestly. It's, uh, it, That'd be kind of cool. But I feel like it'd be very expensive. <laughs> it'd be very expensive. It could... Um, not necessarily. Um, I'm not sure I would fall for a type of device like that, where it's a jack of all trades. Because in that kind of scenario, like the Surface, I mean, it tries to be two things at once. 
Um, it doesn't. It, it's it's good enough. It's passable for multiple devices, but it doesn't excel in one single area. And that's where Apple's always been about. You know, they want a perfect device that. For each thing. For each thing. You have a laptop, you have a desktop, you have an iPad, you have a phone, you have an Apple TV, and I think, that's how it is. I think you've always seen that kind of, for an example that a lot of people probably can relate to, in an RPG game, if you always chose, because I remember you could choose like a uh, like a personality type. Classes, And if you chose yeah. Jack of All Trades, uh, your guy would not be, or your character would not be the best at everything but it would be kind of like neutral like i remember in smash bros or uh, mario kart mario would always be kind of the jack of all traits he kind of be <laughs> just like in the middle of everything not too great at everything but not bad at anything if that makes sense um yep, exactly and i think that's kind of where android google and windows like to go because they like to have the the ability to take everything do it all on one device but Apple really likes to have this device excel at power PC computing, this device at uh, mobile computing, like mobile apps and stuff, this device for TV, this device for music. Like, I, I don't know. I think that's why so many people like all their products, and that's why I think a lot of people have a bunch of their products because they like the build quality and they like that, like, this is dedicated, like, to this feature. So they really can work on improving just this one feature instead of having to work on all the features at once. I think the closest device that Apple has, so jack of all trades uh, device is an iPhone, you know, cause yeah. I know a lot of people that use their iPhone for everything. They don't have a computer, they don't have a tablet, they use their phone for everything. They use it for for browsing the web, for ordering, uh, ordering products online, for every single thing in their life. And I, I don't know. I couldn't get by like that. I don't, I don't think you could. Um, that's just not how we're yeah. hardwired. Um, but I, there are plenty of people like that. And I, that's their jack of all trade device. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, and you could even bring it for now. You know, you could put it, bring it in your phone. A lot of these uh, cars have built in Bluetooth, where you, like my car has. You could uh, answer calls over the built in speaker in the car. And on your speakers, it broadcast the other person obviously and uh you know it'll, you could also play music from your iphone when it's connected in the car so this just brings it to another level and i and i'm loving it you know it's kind of like how i always talk about the apple tv hopefully being a pass-through device it adds all these uh these new uh dimensions that just weren't there before and i think mm -hmm. this apple being in the car it, it's just something that's meant to be you know, it's. It, I'm surprised it hasn't happened sooner. You know, yeah. I'm just um, I'm just really hoping my next car has this built in. You know, I get my yeah. car in time for uh for for this to be implemented. Cause you know, I'm gonna have my car for three four years whenever the next lease runs out, and I want it to be future proof. And l like an article I read mentioned, a lot of people are actually gonna be basing or being influenced on their next car purchase based on Apple CarPlay. and Yeah, I can definitely see that. I can completely understand where that's coming from because this, ad, like I said, it adds so many new dimensions. And, you know, me being the techie, this is right up my alley. So I have a couple of cars in mind that I want to get uh, when my lease is up in the fall. But if, if one manufacturer comes out and actually has this built in their car, I might sway because I, I really want to get an Audi when, for my, yeah. as my next car. Love it. You know, I love the, the, the everything about Audi. It's very, it's very Apple-esque in, in terms of the car, the designs. It's very simple, very yeah. elegant. Um, but let's say Infinity ends up getting CarPlay in their cars. I might have to go for another Infinity because that's yeah. how influenced I will be based on this decision. Um, and if if we can show some of the pictures with the Ferrari, the uh, second link there, it looks good. Not gonna lie, I mean, it's a little basic right now. Obviously, it's more like a iOS kind of two or three right now. Like, there's no like uh, customization options. It's more just a black screen with the apps. But 
it looks like it's functional. Um, the button sizes look great. Uh, it shows messaging. It shows um, all different types of things. It shows uh, navigation. Um, it's it's pretty cool. I mean, you can type uh, by by writing. I mean, voice to sp uh, voice to text recognition, yeah. uh, which is I think a lot of people actually use that now, especially while driving. Um, I know my mom likes to use that the voice to text. Uh, so I I think if if people are looking for a new car when this arrives, I definitely agree with you that this can be a, a huge factor in uh, in buying a new car. But I can also see this kind of bumping up the price uh, quite a bit. Uh, what do you think on that? Possibly. Um, I, I you know it's all software, and, and you know most of these cars mm -hmm. already have touch screen screens in their car so i don't know if it's gonna add too much cost and i, I don't think apple's gonna have a licensing fee where you know if you want to have carplay in your car we're gonna charge you so and so amount per car that ha it has implemented i don't think they're gonna do that it's yet to be seen uh, i'm not too worried about the cost thing right now we'll see what happens when it's actually rolled out but the other thing i forgot to mention is the whole entertainment aspect of carplay so mm -hmm. my car has xm built in you know Many cars have XM built in, which is great. I love XM. Uh, I hate yeah. terrestrial radio. I, I I will never listen to terrestrial radio ever again. Um, I'm mm -hmm. willing to pay the extra for XM. But if you have CarPlay, you're able to stream internet radio straight into your head unit, into your car. So you won't even need the XM. You could use Pandora or Spotify, whatever service you prefer. And you could yeah. have that. You, the internet is at your disposal in your car, you know. Yeah. Possibly even YouTube. I mean, I don't. I'm not talking about videos per se, but you know, there's music on YouTube. Um, mm -hmm. or maybe who knows? You could watch streams maybe in your in your freaking head unit. I mean, yeah, I'm sure a lot of people. I mean, like maybe a stream like this, talking about tech or whatever. Maybe like uh, beer streams. I know there's a lot of those on YouTube where they just kind of like talk about beer and sports or whatever. Maybe you just want that listening in the background while you're driving or something, you know? Yeah, like an audio podcast. Um, Obviously, having it play visually would not be safe while driving, but uh, <laughs> yeah, they, a lot of cars actually disable uh, play video playback while cars in motion, so that, that makes mm -hmm. perfect sense. Well, this this actually has video playback because it uses the H.264 um, codec, which is what YouTube supports. So I can definitely see YouTube going... Uh, cross there somehow if not if it doesn't come like automatically i'm sure someone will be able to program it in the other the other thing to question is will manufacturers be limiting what apple can do in their cars you know which when apple first got into the phone business you know verizon always had a little hand in all their phones you know whenever you bought a verizon phone there would always be verizon ringtone things and all these bloatware verizon stuff and apple wanted no part of that which is why in the beginning they went to at&t because at&t didn't, didn't require that um when they first signed a, in a contract so i'm wondering if apple will be, have a stance firm uh as to have um, these manufacturers having a say on what goes into this feature or will apple mm -hmm. completely have a monopoly as to what goes I, I really think the latter I really think Apple will produce it they'll how they want it and the cars will either take it or leave it and a lot of car a lot of these manufacturers will take it because if they don't have it they might lose out on sales they're gonna be left in the dust with an outdated uh, UI in their car you know there's a yeah. lot for them to lose yeah I can definitely see like because you notice that kind of for a simile or a simile to that um, I guess like Android, it's all it's a lot of times it's being masked over by a company's kind of UI, if that makes sense. Like HTC, mm -hmm. HTC Sense is a complete mask over Android. So I can definitely see cars like customizing it in this way that might slow it down, limit features, whatever. Um, but I mean, all this we'll have to uh, talk about once it actually finally arrives because that'll give us the best like. I guess uh, feel for it exactly well um, the other thing is the car play won't be in effect at all times like if you don't have an iPhone um, it's just gonna be the stock car manufacturers head unit display GUI UI stuff like you we used to now but once you plug in an iPhone or an iDevice iOS device 
that's what what really triggers this this uh, this CarPlay. You know, because if you have an Android, you're not gonna. This is gonna be completely useless for you. So, it's gonna be like a feature that turn that turns on once you plug in your device. So. Yeah, I think I think it's definitely gonna have to be optional. But also, you know how Android companies are. I think once this, once this kind of actually, Samsung will probably jump the gun with next month. They'll release a car thing because Apple kind of <laughs> hinted at one. We'll probably see that next week. Um, <laughs> no, but uh, seriously, I think that there might now become options for cars, Android or iOS. What do you prefer? Well, <laughs> it, it makes sense because remember back in the day when you could buy a car with XM or Sirius built in. Yeah. So maybe it's do you want Apple or Android in your car, or you know, that would be pretty interesting. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think I think we've gone over that quite a bit. Yep. Um, to touch on something kind of quick with Android, uh, the Chromecast has been out for a couple months now, or actually, it's, it's almost a year, right? I think in the mid summer it came out. Yeah, so it's a couple months, almost like seven or eight months. But um, a developer, the uh, Cyanogen mod developer, which you guys might be using right now on your phone, um, he actually uh, made it so you can actually mirror your uh, Android screen with uh, the Chromecast on your TV. Um, it's kind of like an AirPlay feature. Uh, I mean, what do you think about that? It's kind of been done to already. me it's <laughs> it's what took them so long to get this i mean yeah. the chromecast was the perfect device to have this built in now don't get me wrong it does mirroring to, right now to an extent though it's based on uh, a chrome tab you know like i can mirror uh from my from my imac onto my chromecast but it can only mirror the actual tab now i mean if i have i have a note 3 why can't i mirror it to my chromecast right now that makes absolutely no sense. I mean, in the Apple realm, it you can mirror your iMac, your iPad, your iPhone, all to your TV. You know, so um, it's a great feature. I, I love that it's there. But again, why did it take so long? Mm -hmm. I think it's just uh, they didn't want to release that feature with such a cheap device. I think if if they wanted that feature to be out, they would have obviously bundled it in when it first like was released so i think that this developer kind of unlocked a hidden feature i guess um maybe they were planning on doing that with like the chromecast 2 or something like that uh probably a little bit more expensive um but i don't know if you guys have a chromecast and you have a nexus 5 which is what he's been uh testing this on which is all he has for now um maybe you guys are interested in it definitely go check it out um but right now he's developing it for universal android use so that makes sense the chromecast is a, a neat little device you know it's cheap um it's very small yeah. obviously it's just a little dongle that hooks up to an HDMI, hdmi port um it's just the problem i have with it is there's no use for it i mean every day there are like this voodoo is gonna start streaming to it netflix started streaming to it um but it, it's a streaming device right now. I think with mirroring, uh, it adds a whole new realm of possibilities that, that you know, it adds to its repertoire and adds for someone else, a reason for someone else to want to buy one. Because as of right now, I mean, unless you're not, you know, you, you have a reason, a streaming service that's on it, why are you going to buy it? Right? Yeah. As cheap as it, as it is, as, a, as a much of an impulse buy as something can be, it's hard to justify $35 if all it does is Netflix, you know, because everything else in your house does Netflix streaming. <laughs> what do you need? A... Unless you have, I mean, unless you can't really afford it, can't afford an Apple TV, Roku, TiVo. You don't, TiVo doesn't even really exist. You don't anymore, even need but, uh, that, though. So a lot of these TVs have Netflix streaming built in. Or I know, but I'm saying, like, if you have an older, older flat screen or something, I mean, then it's good for you. But if you're not really any of that, if you can afford uh, Apple TV, which are reasonably affordable, why not go for that with a lot more features? Especially if you have an, uh, if you have Android devices or uh, iOS devices, it's definitely other options that will allow you to do zero latency, screen sharing, and all that stuff. 
Yeah. So like I mentioned, it. You know, I I, I wish this thing was out. I mean, <laughs> it, I would. I want to be able to use my Note with my Chromecast. I mean, they're all Android devices. They should work in unison together. Um, if you have a Chromebook, it should do exactly like it does with a Mac. You know, it should be able to scream the Chromebook's uh, screen onto it. You know, it's Chrome, whatever. Um, <laughs> it, it just makes sense, but it it I guess it doesn't in some respect because it's not there. But anyway. <laughs> um, so yeah, I guess we can move on to uh, another topic. Um, but this one is about the Xbox One. So if you guys haven't played your Xbox One in a while, uh, which is understandable, there's not many, a ton of games, um, you might not have noticed it. It's kind of like a hidden update that you guys uh, have to do if you're planning on using any of the new uh, headsets, headset adapters, anything like that. Um, you actually have to update each controller separately. Um, yeah. And here's Just think about what I said. a step-by-step... <laughs> step, uh, I mean, Engadget kind of you know played fun of it. Uh, they ha- included yeah. steps on how to upgrade your your controller as if it was a big task, um, but it's just interesting. You know, it's it's not just a console update, but there's actual firmware updates for the controller. That's yeah. that's unheard of. I obviously we've never seen anything like that, and it's a far cry from back when you know I was growing up, Nintendo sixty four days. Uh, Super Nintendo days where, you know, when a console was released or if a, when a game was released, um, that was how you had it for the lifetime. You know, there was no updates. So now, yep. you know, I, I think it's a good thing that you're able to update the firmware on your controller. Um, it just, it goes back to the old argument, you know, these developers, these game manufacturers are becoming lazy. You know, they're just pushing out a product that's half-assed and then they'll eventually get to updating it and perfecting it. Whereas, you know, back in the day, they really strive to put out a polished product to begin with. So, yeah, it's it's really um, a double-edged sword to me. Yeah, also, you have to think about, though, there is such great demand now with our, our um, I guess you can say generation. Um, the The level of demand is huge and the pressure time sensitive uh releases time sensitive announcements um all this really kind of pushes people to their limits probably in developing uh coding all that stuff so i'm sure uh some of the stuff that they have to do post-release updates for i'm sure some of it's needed because maybe they didn't have enough time because i think people would rather deal with uh, not uh, another update uh, than not have the system for another month. Uh, but that's just me. Yeah, and I agree. You know, I, I'm all for updates for, you know, these uh, these downloads. But, you know, it's like the it's like also for Call of Duty. You know, they have the downloadable content, the maps. Um, to me, the problem lies where they hold back stuff just to put them out later and have extra costs associated to them. You know, to me, downloadable content should have all been about they put as much content into the original disc uh, when it's Hmm. it's released, you know, and then later on, they develop maps or whatever it may be, content add-ons, and then they could charge for it, you know. But when they have a map already in mind before the the, game is released and they hold it for downloadable content later on, that's where I have the problem. that's, That's the whole thing about these downloads, these patches. You know, it makes these developers greedy for money and lazier. But I do agree mm-hmm. where, it, you know, it, it's 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 really tough. Like, where does the line get drawn, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's kind of hard because with the always updating world, always updating technology, you can never have, like, a good fine balance. The fine balance is always changing, if that makes sense. But, Excuse you know, me. there are... Like game companies like EA and Activision, mm. they're the biggest culprits because they're the biggest. They they are just money hungry. Um, EA is kind of digging themselves a grave right now with Battlefield Four. Yeah, and then now that they're releasing Titanfall soon after, so many people are so angry with them right now. Mm-hmm. So 
you know, uh, Microsoft, I, I, I always liked, from the very first console, the Xbox, the original one, they had updates. You could update it real time uh, with the with patches. And that was really the first console I could remember that did that. Um, the PlayStation 2, I think, had that, but not at the very beginning because um, they were nowhere network adapters at the beginning. Um, so Microsoft is really the, the pioneer in this realm. So, um, yeah. <laughs> it would, it, you know, they're the pioneers in also having controller firmware updates. So, you know, it's, it's interesting. I thought it was a neat little topic to uh, bring up, you know. Yeah. Well, also, um, with the haptic, I think that's what they're called, haptic uh, triggers. Yeah. Um, maybe they could, I don't know, maybe they could involve something like with uh, Tom Clancy's The Division, some type of game like that where maybe it's time sensitive, like uh, zombie survival or something like that, uh, radioactive survival. Maybe like the longer that you play, the harder it is to, to do certain things. Maybe the haptic... Uh, feedback on the triggers gets heavier and stuff like that maybe they can involve updates like that where uh uh, it automatically adjusts the 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 trigger feedback according to what you're doing in game i don't know i think that'd be kind of a cool uh feature to implement something like that um i don't know maybe these little ideas they'll toss out down the line because i mean this is a brand new console it's only a couple months old so i'm definitely seeing what what we'll have in the uh, future years. Yeah, I mean, this thing is going to have at least a six-year shelf life, you know, so yeah. there's a lot to look forward to, and when when they're able to update the controller, I mean, that really adds to the life, so I'm excited, I'm, I'm glad that it's possible, but it, it, like I said, there's you got to be careful with these things, you know, but uh, I think we talked enough about that, so let's go on to a completely different topic. So, Matt, yep. you're getting a new computer soon, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, actually, so I got my license, right? And uh, so I haven't really done much. I went to the gas station and went to a couple of things. Congratulations, uh, by the way, on your license. Thank you, thank you. And I wanted to go get a Mac. And I have, I, I work actually at a college, so I was going to get a um, student discount. And I guess I needed like an ID or something. So I can't actually go to the physical store and grab a Mac. I'm switching over to Mac if I didn't, if you guys didn't already get that. Um, so I, I ordered one online. I'm actually getting a completely specced out uh, MacBook 15 uh, inch, uh, MacBook Pro. Um, but yeah, I'm completely switching over to Mac. So next week, you guys will actually see me on my Mac for the first time. Um, and. For the specs, um, pretty much if if you go onto their website, it's a uh, quad core i7, 16 gigs of RAM, uh, five, what is it, 550 gigabytes, something like 512. that, 512, 512, um, flash storage or not flash storage, uh, SSD. Um, what else does it have? It has the GT 750M uh, integrated graphics, not integrated external graphics or whatever you want to call it uh, and then it has an iris pro integrated so it's gonna be awesome it's actually my first computer with uh, like an actual graphics uh processing unit so pretty excited for that wow so you um, actually went to the apple store be- despite me telling you you needed a student id and you tried to buy it in the store yeah. and yeah. they turned you got turned away because you didn't have an you know they they're they're pretty like loose with that their policy with student yeah. discounts but when you go into the store, you that I'm, definitely need an ID. I'm only an employee too, so <laughs> I'm sure if I if I actually went to the like to the um, school, then I would wouldn't be as bad. But I'm just an employee, so I only have the email. Right. Um, but it works online because they don't really check it. So uh, yeah, very excited to go OS X. Never really actually used a Mac. <laughs> as my like primary computing PC. I actually last time I used a Mac was seventh grade, because uh, we actually got those for uh, to bring home. But it was like a plastic body uh, MacBooks. It was like right after they went from the G five MacBooks. Yeah, the white plastics. Uh, yeah. And those are very slow. It was like dual core one point two gigahertz uh, processors. But yeah, I'm very excited. I uh, can't wait to see the new screen. Uh, I've actually never really looked at Retina display. Um, I mean, I've seen them in the stores and stuff, but I haven't like actually got to sit down and use one for extended time, you know? Because that's, I think, the only way that you can kind of see 
how how things work how they look and appreciate so. it yeah it's like you know if you just take a quick glance i mean it's one thing but once you actually start using a retina screen and you see all the nuances you know like the the text is such much more crisper and stuff like that then you get to appreciate uh what it is but let me ask you something why because i know you've been going back and forth on getting a mac and building your own gaming pc um for a lot a long time i would say about six months you've been going back and forth um yeah what made you go to the mac side well as you know i've been wanting to go with mac for so long like probably before summer i've been wanting to go to mac but it's just been so out of my price range now that I have like a job and stuff. Um, I'd definitely be able to get it now uh, as I have. And uh, yeah, I mean, the PC is good and all for gaming, but I mean, for the Streamline OS, for all the new features, and tr just to be in the club of uh, kind of like, oh, I have a Mac, you know. You ain't cool unless you got a Mac. I think it's more of a mature computing experience, you know. It, it's just it's just the whole experience you know I, to me i couldn't go back to windows um it's yeah. you know and if you You'd still have to though for your job right <laughs> i mean if you wanted to you could have windows on there with boot camp or parallels or something like that and you could yeah. you could run all the games you want and with that that actual specked out mac that you're getting you could run pretty much any game uh you know that you want battlefield 4 and all that stuff so you know as much as it's cool to have a gaming PC, um, I would love to build a gaming PC, but then I would be mm. stuck with Windows, and that's something I do not yeah. want to go back with. Mm-hmm, for sure. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm so, so excited. Uh, that should be here Monday. So, yeah. So, that's a, that's... Who knows, we might, do like a, we might do like a live stream, like setting it up or something. I remember I, I ordered one for Kelly uh, for her birthday, my wife, if you guys don't know, um, a little late birthday present, and it, it took about five days to get here. And, you know, she was running a re an old, the actual original MacBook Air uh, for the longest, yeah. and that thing was slow as hell, so she was so this, excited this to get this. This girl I know, this girl I know, she does YouTube videos, she does like vlogs type stuff, she still runs the original 13 inch MacBook Air. Oh my god! Actually, it's the I think it's the 11 inch. It's a 13 inch. The original was only 13 inch, and that thing was slow. Okay. <laughs> it is. Oh my god! It's like a dual core. Like it can barely run um, Safari and like what is well, it? Um, the dock system or whatever you call it. Well, um, running on hers on on my wife's MacBook Air. Um, running Skype on it alone would make the the internal I don't know it was a fan or whatever it was in it. Uh, it was just it got so hot and it ran really terribly. But you know, you have a great computer coming your way. So uh, you know, yeah, that, I have a I have a pretty good one now. I mean, it's good, but it's also Windows. It's also it's it doesn't have any graphics power. It has sixty four megabytes of VRAM. Like, come on, eek. what is that? <laughs> okay, I could spit out more VRAM than that. Um, but I mean, it, it runs good for what I do now. I mean, it's a good streaming computer, kind of just good, um, uh, internet computer. I mean, you can do word processing. Um, I'll probably use this for school, to be honest. I'll probably just use it for taking back and forth to school. Um, especially now that I have a car, I can, I feel safer bringing it back and forth. Um, but I mean, this thing, I'm running dual screens. I'm running, uh, two set uh two separate um google chrome skype and also sometimes i'll be running like uh obs sorry for the noise um but i mean i mean this is running good but i i really want that supreme performance that i'll be able to get with the mac not to mention so. design the damn thing is so thin and so oh, yeah. light oh i know? am so excited for that literally my whole desk is going like I'm taking away these two monitors. I actually might put these on the table behind me as like uh, another computing station if the guest comes over or whatever. Or if I just want to uh, listen to music, I'll just play that in the background or something. Um, and literally, it's just going to be all clear here, just my MacBook, my Wacom tablet, and that's it. Yeah. So I'm so excited that is awesome. to get uh, cleaner, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Easiest way. And, uh, you know, um, what? I also, I also bought. Oh, Go ahead. Keep going. Go ahead. Okay, uh, this week I've bought a couple tech items. I actually bought a PS Vita. I've been playing this for a little while. Um, it's actually a lot of fun. I've been wanting a handheld for a while. 
because I travel a lot. Like tomorrow I'm going uh, to New Hampshire, I'm going skiing. And uh, yeah, I like to use this type of stuff um, while I'm traveling so I don't have to like play games on my phone or something like that. But uh, yeah, these are definitely worth it. I, I got this over the Vita. Uh, not the Vita. The um, Game Boy. 3DS because yeah. um, <laughs> pretty much. Uh, because, I mean, this has more mature games that I like. I mean, I got uh, Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom, Lego Lord of the Rings, and uh, Resistance Burning Skies. And they all are very good. Uh, Resistance Burning Skies, it's my first FPS on a um, on a handheld. That actually feels good. Um, I remember having, like, Medal of Honor on my original PSP, and you actually had to use, like, the uh, X... Um, circle, uh, square, and triangle buttons to look up and down, left and right. And it was just a bad experience overall. So I'm very happy with this purchase as well. So yeah, the, I've got a lot of tech. The <laughs> Vita is definitely, hardware-wise, it's a great console, you know, a great handheld. Um, the problem I have yeah. with it, and I considered buying it Black Friday, there were a bunch of deals going on with it. Um, it mm-hmm. There's just no games for it, really. I mean, there, there are a couple, um, Uncharted, but I heard Uncharted isn't that good. You know, um, and I'm never Borderlands Two. Well, when that comes out, that's I'm. I might just use it just for that. <laughs> not gonna lie. Borderlands Two. It had me addicted for probably a good eight months. I just played that on the Xbox 360 with my cousin. We just play co-op all day, all night. It's just so fun. I don't know for some reason. I just love that game. You know, I, I didn't like Borderlands One as much, but Borderlands Two is way better. I never actually played Borderlands. I have to give it a try, but um. That's that's the only problem I have with the system is there aren't many games and that's why it's not selling very well. And you have the original version where it has the OLED screen, the better screen, um, because yeah. they're releasing a slimmer model that has just a regular LED screen, as many of you probably know. Um, and it's just not as good quality. It's not crisp and it doesn't have the vibrant uh, colors yeah. to it. It's a little bit thinner and it's uh, has the bigger start and select and uh, circular PS button, but. I still like this. This is this is a good size for my hands because I I have pretty big clobber in hands, you know. <laughs> and uh, I mean, I don't want something that I can barely hold. I mean, I don't want to be like feeling like I'm holding my wallet playing video games here. Um, I want to like know that I'm holding something, you know. Yeah. I mean, that's that's the same with the iPads. I mean, the iPad Mini was cool and all, but it was almost too light. I like to actually feel when something's in my hand. I mean, a lot of people complain like, oh, this is too heavy to carry around all day. Like, saw a review today it was pretty sad i saw a review on macbook pro and the guy was like i really wouldn't recommend carrying this around in your backpack it's a little heavy what? i was like it's like four pounds I mean, come okay. on. for a 15 inch or even a 13 inch whatever it is it's so light i mean the dells comparatively are huge and really are a strain on your back i mean some dells are like eight pounds so uh to compare to complain about a macbook pro it's uh pretty weird but anyway, I, I think we uh, we talked about enough today. It's a, we did a lot of different topics. Uh, you know, you have a lot of stuff coming your way tech-wise. And uh, looking forward to seeing how your setup's going to look. So once you have everything set up, you got to make sure to take a couple pictures and we'll share it uh, on one of the shows upcoming. So uh, Yeah, we'll probably share it next week. And uh, I'll take step-by-step photos, like what I changed or whatever, next week. And if you guys check my... If you guys check my Twitter, you'll probably see that too. I'm sure you'll do unboxings and all that stuff. So. Oh yeah, yeah. For sure. Of course. Come what on. You think crazy? Come on. <laughs> so. I am a tech reviewer and stuff. So. <laughs> yeah. So we'll go about wrapping up the show. Um, I just want to bring up one other thing. Uh, Matt and I and a couple other people in the chat, like Empire Craft, uh, we we have a Minecraft server that we've been playing quite a yeah. bit. And uh, if anyone is interested in joining, you know, we will allow you to, I'll, I'll whitelist you. And, uh, you know, it's, just add us on Skype, either myself or Rich. Yeah, just let us know your Minecraft name. We'll whitelist you. And, you know, we'll have a, I'll give you a little plot of land. You could build your house or whatever. Uh, we actually started building a baseball stadium. It looks pretty damn good. We should actually stream it uh, oh, one of these days. We're like 70% done. Yeah. Maybe we'll stream it, Rich. You know what I was thinking? Maybe we'll stream it Monday once I get the computer. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, because then we can see my new graphic power. <laughs> the same crappy Minecraft graphics. But anyway. <laughs> well, no, no. I mean, because I've been using like really low settings on Minecraft. Yeah, no. So I think... You'll be able to stream much better quality, which is awesome. Oh yeah. So. And uh, yeah, very exciting. Yeah. So that that being said, I want to thank 
everyone for watching. I mean, there are a ton of people in today's chat room. And there's a lot going on. And yes, Mike, yo, we will have an after show. So make sure you stay tuned. Uh, stay tuned. Stay streaming. <laughs> whatever you want to call it. Stay streaming. Uh, for everyone else watching us on the recorded uh, video, again, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support. And uh, we'll see you guys next week on another Generation Tech episode. Special edition. Special edition. Absolutely.